we're glad to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon. Say amen. That's right. And so what I want to talk today about is limitless faith. Amen. Do we put a limit on our faith or does God call us to go before him without any boundaries and leave it wide open? I don't know about, I don't know about you, but I like wide open faith, right? There's no limitations on it. That means I can dream, I can imagine, I can think really, really big. Isaiah 54, 2 through 5, it says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and the left, and your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you and we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that you're faithful and that you are always there and that you never leave us and you never forsake us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So God is calling us in Isaiah to enlarge the place of our tent, stretch our curtains wide, do not hold back and lengthen our cords and strengthen our stakes. What is? What are we preparing for? We're preparing for what we cannot see. Amen? We're calling those things that aren't as though they are, were. And we're preparing. We're preparing. We're putting place. We're putting ourselves in place to be able to receive the blessings that God has. Can you say amen? So our faith is limited. The only thing that limits us is our capacity to receive it. And we have to renew our minds to the Word of God to be able to change our thinking and to think like God. Did you know you can think like God? We don't want to think like ourselves because we think too small, right? We think too small, so we want to think limitless, no boundaries. What is it? That person that uh, um, you've been praying for to get saved for a really long time, and somebody might tell you, well, there's no way they'll get saved. No! We keep praying. We keep believing. We keep declaring the word of God over it, right? And we know that one day, right, that it may be on their deathbed, but we know that one day they will come to the knowledge of who Jesus is. So keep praying for your relatives. Keep praying for those hard cases. That's what God has called us to do. And so we have to renew our mind to the word of God to be able to change our thinking to think like God. What can we do if we expect supernatural increase every single day? Increase in our spiritual life, increase in our relationships, increase in our finances, increase in our giving, increase in our thinking. So we have to increase in our thinking and stop thinking small. So look at your neighbor and tell them, stop thinking small. We're big thinkers in here, right? Big dreamers. We can imagine a lot. And so to increase our thinking, we are challenged to go up to the next level of prosperity. So certain things must be done. We can't sit around, watch TV all day, and expect our faith to grow. So it works like this. Faith works like this. You make deposits, and then you can make withdrawals. You deposit the word of God in you, then you can make a withdrawal. If you do not make any deposits, what happens? There's nothing to withdraw. Amen? So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So every time we hear and hear the word of God, our faith is increased and we grow. So we have to develop our faith. Everybody, I don't just say it like this, everybody is at a different place. Amen? But if you're all, we're all working on developing our faith, then we're all growing and we'll be where God wants us to be. Can you say amen to that? So we can't just sit around, do whatever we want, feed our minds with, you know, whatever is out in the world. You have to feed your spirit, feed your mind, amen, the word of God. Amen. Romans 12:1. Into Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
And then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So we have to become single-minded about the things of God. What does that mean? How do we remove the limits and enlarge our faith capacity to receive from God? We have to apply the biblical principle of total immersion. Total immersion. What does that mean? What does that look like? If we look at James chapter 1, verse 5 and 8, it says, If any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask of God who gives generously to all without finding fault. It will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubt is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So being, being double-minded, that's, that's not going to get you what you're believing for. So if you're thinking in your head, you know, yes, I believe in God. Yes, I listen to the word. Yes, I've been praying, and I've been believing in God. And then you get a phone call, and, and, and it's bad news. You have a decision to make at that very moment. Are you going to receive the bad news, or are you going to continue to walk in faith and do what the Word says? Amen? And we all go through this. We all go through this, and there's decisions to be made by all of us. And we have to decide that we're going to listen to what God says. Because if God made you a promise, he's good for it. Amen? Look at your neighbor and tell him God's good for it. He's good for it. He's good for it. If he made you a promise, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. I love that about God. Amen. I love it. He keeps his word. He, I can trust him. Do you know how many people don't trust God? They put physical, human characteristics upon God, and maybe they've been hurt by their mom or their dad or someone that's supposed to love them, and then they attribute those characteristics to God and think maybe he'll keep his word or maybe he won't. No, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he makes you a promise, you can take that promise to the bank. You plant it in your heart. You stand on that promise because God is faithful. That's what the word says. Amen? And he's faithful. Faithful. What does that mean? It means he doesn't go back and forth. God is not, we don't serve a double-minded God. No. People are the ones that are double-minded. Yes, amen. Coming to church. Yes, amen. Then run out the door. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. That is double-mindedness. Amen? When you say yes and amen in church, you better say yes and amen out those doors. And while you're driving and while you're at your job and when you're at home. The Bible tells us to meditate on the Word of God in all our comings and goings. When we sit down at the table, we're to talk about it. When we lay down to sleep, we're to talk about it. When we wake up in the morning, we're to talk about it. What are we to talk about? We're to thank God for His goodness and His grace and His mercy and that He never leaves us, never forsakes us, and is always there. Hallelujah! His promises are true. And I am a product of those promises. You are a product of those promises. Think about where you would be today if it weren't for the promises of God. Most of us wouldn't even be here. Amen? But we're here. We're still here. Because God spoke to us. Because God gave us a promise. We learn we don't have to walk in sickness and disease. We learn we don't have to walk in poverty. We learn we don't have to walk in lack. We've learned these things, that we can stand on the Word of God. And you know what? His Word works. So look at your neighbor and say, His Word works. So we're not double-minded. Being double-minded will not get you what you're believing for. What are your faith projects? Did you know that you have faith projects? When you're believing for something, that's a project, a faith project. I usually have about 10 or 20 at one single time, right? I have a lot of faith projects that I'm putting my faith out there for, that I'm believing God for. And I know 
that I shall have what I say. Amen? You shall have what you say. So what are you believing for? What are you, what are you believing God to do in this last quarter of 2017? Amen. And what about 2018? Now is the time to believe and get yourself in faith. Apply the principle of total immersion. Total immersed in the word of God. The more you immerse yourself in God's word, the more you'll learn it, begin to apply it in your life and change your thinking. We have to become totally immersed in order to break through the limitations. You know, when you get under the word of God and you're listening to the word of God and the word of God is getting into your spirit and it's building your faith, it's developing your faith. And then all of a sudden you can begin to see things like God sees things and you see things a little bit clearer. Isn't that true? You may wake up in the morning and say, there's no way. There is no way I can get out of this situation. There is no physical way. And there's not. But the wonderful news is that we don't operate so much in the physical. We operate in the supernatural. Amen? And by the power of our words, we can call the supernatural into the natural. Y'all get that? We can call those things that aren't as though they were. We don't walk by what we see. We walk by faith. Amen? We don't walk by what we see. We walk by faith. There's a quote from Nelson Mandela. Y'all remember Nelson Mandela was just a wonderful man of faith. And one of his quotes is like, it's always impossible until it's done. Hmm? It's always impossible until it's done. Everything that God has called us to do is impossible. There is no way we can do it physically in our own strength. But that's okay. He gives us dreams and visions that are limitless. He gives us things, and he plants these desires into our spirits so we can begin to believe for it. Listen, that hard case person that won't come to the Lord, maybe there's a lot of people that have been praying for that person year in and year out, and maybe they stop praying, but God put that person on your heart because he knows that you are going to make that person a faith project, and you're not going to stop praying till that person comes to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen? That's what we're called to do. And so what are the faith projects that you have? What is it that you want to see God do in this last quarter of 2017? This last quarter of 2017. Amen? And we have personal faith projects and we have corporate faith projects that we want to see God move in our church and we want to see God take our city and we want to see things happening. Listen, things are happening. Things are happening. Though we don't see them so necessarily in the physical realm, it doesn't mean they're not happening in the spiritual realm. Amen? You know healing works a lot like that. Healing works a lot like that. I saw a testimony at the Living Victory of a lady that was uh, given 30 days to live. And she worked for her father. Her father was a pastor. And she worked for the, her father, you know, in the ministry, and she was given 30 days to live. And they said that she had cancer, uh, leukemia, I believe it was leukemia, and that she was going to die within 30 days. So she took that news, and she went home, and she said she was just laying on her couch, and she was just getting ready to die, getting ready to uh, go on and be with the Lord, getting all of her stuff in order, and her dad came over. And he came to her house, and he said, and looked at her and said, what are you doing? She, he said, if you don't get up off that couch, you're going to die. So get up off that couch. And so she got up off that couch. She didn't feel good. She felt like getting sick to her stomach. But she got the word of God because her dad wouldn't let her let go of it. And she started walking back and forth reading the word of God. She didn't see any change in her, phys- in her physical body at all but at the end of 30 days she was still here so she decided to go to the doctor 
She went to the doctor, and she asked them to run some more tests. Guess what? They couldn't find any sign of the cancer. I'm telling you, the Word of God will take you from sick to healed. The Word of God will take you from lack to prosperity. The Word of God will take you from without to with. The Word of God is everything that you need to live this life on earth. Amen. That's how important it is. We should revere the Word of God. We should give it first place in our lives. It deserves to have first place in our lives. Amen? And when we make it first place in our lives, then we see God really move in, 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 our, in our lives. So we can't be double-minded. We have to change our thinking. We have to become totally immersed in order to break through limitations, enlarge our capacity to receive. Enlarge your capacity to receive. Can God heal you? Yes, he can. Will God heal you? Yes, he will. But we have to fight. We have to contend. And we do that by using our weapon, which is the word. And you can find that in Ephesians chapter 6. The word is our sword. A lot of Christians are going around fighting uh, battles that God has already won, but they're losing. Why? Because they're not using their weapon, which is the Word of God. Amen? The Word of God heals. (laughs) Praise God. It heals our bodies. It heals our minds. It heals our souls and our, and our spirits and every part of us that we don't even know that we need healing. It heals us. Amen? That's how powerful it is. Oh, praise God. It heals us. It restores us. It delivers us. But it takes time. Spending with God. Time in his word. It takes some discipline. And if you really need a healing or if you really need a breakthrough or if you really need something from God, then you totally immerse in the Word of God and you'll get your breakthrough. But if you exchange mindless entertainment for the Word, you will not necessarily get your breakthrough. Listen, I need all the breakthroughs I can get, right? I want to. I, I want God to work into my life. I'm an overcomer, and I need some things to happen. So what do I do? I gotta ramp it up. I gotta totally immerse myself into the Word of God because I need to get from point A to point B, and I need to get there quick, right? And so I need a supernatural transportation to get there, and that's through the Word. Does that make sense to you this morning? Supernatural. Praise God. We're not meant to operate in the natural. We're meant to operate in the supernatural. We're to be led by our spirits, not by our bodies and not by our minds. Because your body and your mind will talk you out what your spirit is saying is right, right? But we want to be led by our spirits. And when we pray and we talk to God, then we're talking to him spirit to spirit, and then he's downloading into us instruction because Psalm 119 says he's a light to my path, and so he's shining a light to my path. He's showing me which way to go. He's showing me what to say. He's showing me who I need to contact. He's giving me a way. Praise God. He'll give you a way, but you have to totally immerse yourself in the word. Amen? Amen. And so if you need something, it'll take discipline. But how how bad do you want a supernatural breakthrough in your life? I want a supernatural breakthrough in a lot of different faith projects that I have going on right now. A person who stays single-minded in the word will enlarge their capacity to receive from the Lord. We've got to enlarge our capacity to receive from the Lord. Nothing is too difficult for God. Do we believe that? Nothing is too difficult for God. Nothing. Nothing. God can do it. So look at your neighbor and say, God can do it. Even when we have a mess, God can do it. 
Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. It says, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, followed me. And this is referring to the time when Caleb went into the promised land. Caleb was single-minded on what God has said. So Caleb went into the promised land. He saw everything that God had promised. Do you remember the story? And then he came back. And then what happened? Then the Israelites, they decided that it was too big. They decided that that the people over there were too big and that they were too small. And if you remember the correct terminology in Numbers, it says they were grasshoppers in their own eyes. Listen, that's grasshopper mentality. God doesn't want you to have grasshopper mentality. He wants you to think big. He wants you to think like him. And if we begin to think like him, then we can have what he has amen and so Caleb went over and he saw the promise and he came back and he said yeah it's big yeah there's big people over there giants yeah we've got some work to do but our God has promised us and we can take it amen we can take it I want to tell you no matter how big it is in your life today our God has promised us and you can take it amen but you've got to have that mentality that you're an overcomer Praise God. And so in Joshua chapter 14, you know, some years had passed. They didn't go into the promised land when they were supposed to. And the people of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgog. And, and Caleb, the, the son of Jephunneh, the Kizanite, spoke. And he says, you remember what God said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me back at Kadesh Barnaria? I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of God, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And when I brought back an honest and accurate report, my companions, my command, companions who were with me discouraged the people. But I stuck to my guns, totally with God, my, my God. And that was the day that Moses solemnly promised, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance, you and your children's forever. Yes, you have lived totally for God. Now look at me. God has kept me alive as he has promised. It is now 45 years later since God spoke this word to Moses, years in which Israel wandered in the desert. And here I am today, 85 years old. I'm as strong as I was the day Moses sent me out. I'm as strong as ever in battle, whether coming or going. So give me this hill country that God promised me. You yourself heard the report that the Anakim were there with their great fortress cities. If God goes with me, I will drive them out just as God said. Amen? This is coming from an 85-year-old man. He's saying, I can still see. I am not weak because God is with me. You know, I love Caleb's spirit. You know that all of us can be like Caleb if we just make up our mind that we're not going to go by what we see, but go by the promises of God. Amen? Amen. And so we know that they eventually took the promised land and that Caleb was at able to pass over god is faithful to his word if he made you a promise it'll come to pass so stay steady stay on course what has god promised you have you lost sight of the promises have you stopped meditating on those have you replaced it with other stuff listen stay on course you're going to make it. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due season, due time, everybody say due season. And the appointed season we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. So don't faint. Keep steady. Stay the course. God is faithful. And we have to feed on the word of God. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. So you have a decision to make. You have to make a decision for time in the word. You can't try to fit the word into your busy schedule. You have to make the word part of your schedule. Make the word first place in your life. The word works and faith works. We must stay single-minded on the word, meaning whatever the word says I am, I am. Whatever the word says I can have, 
I can have. Whatever the word says I can do, I can do. So taking off limits of God means taking the limits off of ourselves of what we can do in God. We cannot afford to be distracted by the enemy. Amen? We cannot afford to be distracted by the enemy with the same old tiresome tactics that he always uses, such as offense, criticism, gossip. You get the idea, right? We can't just, you know, get all stuck. You know, offense is the biggest tool that the enemy uses to keep people out of church. And if you're offended... Um, and that's why you're not coming to church, then you're cutting your nose off to spite your face. Y'all remember that saying? You know, don't do that. Decide in your mind that you decide not to be offended anymore because the enemy is keeping you from the word that you need to hear. Amen. Amen. And we all need to be used by God. We, we don't forsake assembling ourselves together. Why? Because we need each other. Why? Because I see God in you. You see God in me. I see God in this person. They see God in me. So we see God in each other. We see the glory of God in each other. We pray for each other. We stand on the word together. We're not meant to fight our battles alone. We're meant to fight our battles as an army. Amen? Not one person, but an army. And you can't be an army if you stay home and you're AWOL. All right. That was free, and I hope you receive it. Praise God. So you got to make a decision. Take the limits off yourselves. Don't be distracted. Rise. Decide to rise above those low-level ways of living and rise to a different level. And as we do that, we can see our faith rise. And we'll do that. We'll see our faith rise when we speak. We'll see our faith rise when we breathe. We'll see our faith rise when we pray. We'll see our faith rise when we're living the word of God. And we begin to see things happen right before our eyes. And we know it's because we prayed and believed. Amen. So you can pray and you can believe God for great things in your life. But you have to take off the limits. Stop thinking in terms of boundaries. Don't put boundary don't put boundaries on God. Cuz he will not be bound up. He's so vast. He's so good. There's so much to him. Amen. And so God has a new level of glory for you, but we have to be immersed in the word and in his spirit. If God has made you a promise, Don't take no for an answer from anyone else. Amen? God has promised you. You stand on his promise. 2 Peter 1.3 His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. And through these he has given us his very great and precious promises. So that through them, we may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. He has given us these great and precious promises. These promises are valuable. These promises are priceless. It's worth more than anything money can buy on earth. It's God speaking to our spirits giving us his word that if we will just believe it and if we will just receive it we will see the manifestations of his word carried out in our lives amen amen that's amazing that's the kind of life i want to live what about you We have to take the limits off God, take the limits off us, take the limits off our faith, and we can move mountains. If you will say it, you can have it. Amen? Say that with me. If I will say it, I can have it. Let's say it again. If I will say it, 
I can have it. Amen? And you start speaking to those mountains. You start believing God and going forward. Watch what you say. Get your words in line with the Word of God. And as you get your words in line with the Word of God, begin changing what you're speaking. Change your confession, so to speak. And have what you say. And this time next year, 2018, you're going to look back and you're going to go, Oh, my goodness, look what the Lord has done. Amen? So, so, get sickness, a mindset of sickness, out of your mind right now. Get a mindset of lack and poverty out of your mind right now. And decide to meditate on God's Word. Replace those things. See, that's a deficit. So replace those deficits with the Word of God and begin to change your situation by speaking to it and declaring it. Amen? Listen, I declare every Sunday that this place is full. We don't walk by what we see, right? We, we walk by the Word of God. Every Sunday this place is full in Jesus' name. I declare it. I declare it. I declare it. Amen? What are you declaring? In your life, what is it that you need in your life? Make the time and be totally immersed. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you and we just thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that you're faithful. We thank you, God, that your promises are yes and amen. And, Father, I just plead the blood of Jesus over every person that's here today and those that are listening online. God, I pray for them and their families, Lord, and that you will make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, your word says that you'll bring water in the desert, and many people have desert in their lives, and so we're asking for water right now over their situations. God, I just pray that people will begin to develop their faith, that they can speak to those mountains, God, and begin to walk in an over coming mindset lord and begin to see that they can take authority over everything that the enemy brings their way through the name of jesus the blood of jesus and the word of god thank you god thank you for loving us thank you for teaching us thank you for giving us your spirit thank you for everything that you've done for us we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. 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 All right. Well, it's good to see you this this today, this Sunday. And, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Hopefully, we'll meet at our new location on Wednesday. And, and we're going to be having a good time. And, and God is good, right? He provides all the time. And so we thank him for that. We thank our friends at Mount Olive Church for opening their church to us so that we can have our Wednesday night Bible study. So anyway, be blessed, have a wonderful week, and take the limits off God. Amen?